Namaskar and very good evening to all. We are again, again meeting in the second session of the webinar series, Education for Life by Deepya. In the previous session, we discussed about joy of learning. It was a great session being with two experts on board. People, those who have missed the session, they can watch uh, that video on Deepya's YouTube channel. In the series of Education for Life, today we are going to discuss about back to school. And the guests for today's session are Dr. R. Ramanan and Professor D.P. Suneja. Dr. R. Ramanan is a chairperson of New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, Indian Beechers Advisors. He is board member of Indo-Israel Innovation Forum, Indo-US Science and Technology Forum, Senior Fellow, I am Bangalore's NSRCEL Innovation Hub. He's lead advisor for UNICEF, UNDP Youth Innovation, UWA. Strategic advisor on innovation and entrepreneurship to multiple organizations, universities, and NGOs. He is also board member of e Samiksha, a government of India's digital university and national employment exchange platform, Unnati. Dr. Ramanathan has served as first mission director and additional secretary Niti Aayog Government of India. Prior to joining Niti Aayog, he has served as senior vice president, Tata Consultancy Services, TCS. He's a graduate of electrical engineering from IIT Mumbai. He has also learned advanced management at Harvard Business School, sustainability leadership at Cambridge University. Gujarat Law Society has conferred Honorary Doctorate to Dr. Ramanan. Dr. Ramanan, a great pleasure to be with you and welcome again. Thank you. Thank you, Puneetji, for this very generous introduction. And it is a pleasure and a privilege for me to be part of this very, very august uh, um, audience, as well as the speakers and the panelists. Thank you, sir. Another guest is Professor B.P. Suneja. Professor Suneja is a graduate yes, in civil engineering from MBM Engineering College, Jodhpur. He learned his master's in structural engineering and PhD, both from IIT Delhi. He's an expert in earthquake and disaster management. He has served in, at Rajasthan Technical University, Kota, in various positions at te of teaching and administrative uh, responsibilities. Professor Suneja has contributed a large in promotion of universal human values programs and new education policy. He has been known for his words of wisdom on role of professionals in new educational policy. Welcome, Professor B.P. Sumitra, sir. Thank you. Thanks for your kind words, sir. <clears throat> and the third guest, uh, Professor D.P. Saklaniji, due to his last minute some meetings, he is unable to join the program. He has extended his regret. Now, moving towards today's program, sir. So coming to uh, Dr. Ramanan, every day is the first day of school. The road to here and everywhere on earth begins in the classroom. In your opinion, what is the role of schooling in life, Dr. Ramanan? Thank you, Puneetji. And I think this is a very fundamental and a very, very important question that you have asked. Uh, from my point of view, uh, the school is a place which actually empowers the young student for preparing themselves for the future. Uh, the school is not a place where you're just coming to get some education, to get some marks and to qualify yourself. That is in, that's an important feature, but that is not the most important or fundamental focus of what the school should be. Uh, the school actually educates you and empowers you to become a, a human being, to blossom into a human being who will be able to contribute not only to oneself, but also to society uh, and to the rest of the world. And so it is very important when you look at school, how the school prepares you in a very holistic manner, in an all round manner. Uh, there are many, many aspects uh, of a human being uh, that can be blossomed, that, can, that people have talent in, that people have aptitude in and that they have a great interest in. How does the school discover that? 
uh, or the school management, the teachers, the principals, uh, and even the parents, how they discover that and allow that particular talent, allow that particular creativity in a child to blossom to its full potential is what the school is all about. And so it's very important when you go to a school or when the school receives a student, uh, how they are nurturing the child to become a very, very creative child, a child uh, which is capable of not only being proud of what it has learned, uh, he or she have learned in, in the school, but also how they will be able to use that knowledge to empower themselves further as they go in life, in the university or into the world, uh, into the industry, uh, into any area of their chosen uh, experience and their chosen interests. So I think uh, that is what schooling is all about. And schooling is also, you know, when you when you look at schools, it is not just that this is a 10 year or a 12 year period or a 20 year period. You know, school empowers you to learn to learn because learning has to be an integral part of your life. And there are so many changes that we are seeing in our own lifetime in terms of the environment that we are living in, in terms of the challenges that we are living in. So how do we become problem solvers? How do we become innovators? How do we become creators? of new jobs and new opportunities that we see? And how do we address the emerging challenges? That is what the school equips a person for, uh, with and enables them to be able to contribute meaningfully. Well said, Dr. Ramanathan, uh, Ramanathan as well as you have given a right foundation for today's topic, uh, back to school, realizing the necessity of school and schooling and in what way it is, it plays a very important role in each one's life to be successful, to be happy, and to attain some uh, great heights. Now, moving to uh, Professor Suneja. Yes. Commonly, we say that education is the key to unlock the world, a passport to freedom. Do you think that over the years, the school education has moved from inculcating the values and ethics? In what way school education should be rooted in the Indian local context? Thanks, Paneerji. Uh, you have rightly pointed out uh, that our education system over the period has changed a lot. Dr. Ramnan nicely explained that school education plays a vital role in shaping the overall personality, the way of thinking, the way of learning, and many more points he has covered. और यदि हम बात करें संस्कार व मानवीय मूल्यों की तो इन महत्वपूर्ण विषयों से हमारी जो एजुकेशन सिस्टम है हमारा जो शिक्षा प्रणाली है वह कहीं ना कहीं हटती नजर आ रही है इट्स अनफॉर्चुनेट पार्ट सर वैसे तो बच्चों को संस्कार व मूल्य की शिक्षा परिवार से मिलती है लेकिन यह हमारा दुर्भाग्य है दिस इज अनफॉर्चुनेट सिनेरियो दैट इस मेटेलिस्टिक वर्ल्ड में जब हम विकास की डेवलपमेंट की जो ब्लाइंड रेस है उसमें हम शामिल हो गए और हमारा जो प्रथम पाठशाला थी परिवार उसको भी हमने कहीं ना कहीं गवा दिया तो स्कूल की इस रेस्पेक्ट में लाइबिलिटी और भी बढ़ जाती है बिकॉज देर इज अ डबल रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द स्कूल्स टू प्रोवाइड दीज टाइप्स ऑफ एजुकेशन विच दे आर सपोज टू गेट फ्रॉम देअर फैमिलीज अब यहाँ कारण स्पष्ट है सर कि आज हम लोगों ने न तो अपनी आवश्यकताओं को नीड्स को डिफाइन कर पा रहे हैं न हमारी खुशी खुशी की वजह को डिफाइन कर पा रहे हैं दैट इज द बेसिक रीजन बिहाइंड ऑल दीज जगलरीज कि न तो हम अपनी गांधी जी ने भी कहा था कि देर इज एनफ इन द वर्ल्ड टू मीट द नीड ऑफ एवरी वन बट देर इज नॉट एनफ टू मीट द ग्रीड ऑफ एवरी और ये प्रॉब्लम तभी स्टार्ट हुआ वेन वी कन्वर्टेड आवर नीड्स इन द ग्रीड सर अगर मैं चार पंक्तियों में इस को थोड़ा आपको संदर्भ बोलूं तो विकास की अंधी दौड़ों में विकास की अंधी दौड़ों में हम कैसी धुनी रमा बैठे उड़ने की इस चाहत में उड़ने की इस चाहत में पैरों को जमी से उठा बैठे बिल्कुल धरती को हमने नाप लिया धरती को हमने नाप लिया जहाँ चांद सितारों पर पहुंचे कुल कायनात को जीत लिया पर घर परिवार गवा बैठे पर घर परिवार गवा बैठे तो ये विडंबना है सर आज की जिसको हमें सीरियसली थॉट देना पड़ेगा एंड इट्स राइट टाइम हाई टाइम अब फलस्वरूप जैसा मैंने बताया स्कूलों की जिम्मेदारी और भी बढ़ गई है 
पुनीत जी मेरा कहने का आशय यह नहीं है कि समय के साथ शिक्षा प्रणाली में परिवर्तन नहीं आना चाहिए आना चाहिए किंतु यह परिवर्तन ऐसा हो कि जो एजुकेशन के बेसिक एम्स एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव्स हैं उससे कहीं ना भटके अब ये जो इसके ऑब्जेक्टिव्स हैं या इसके उद्देश्य हैं या इस शिक्षा से हमें क्या अपेक्षाएं हैं उसको तो वैदिक काल से ही डिफाइन किया गया है सर ऋग्वेदों ऋग्वेदों में भी इसका जिक्र मिलता है एक श्लोक है वन पॉइंट वन सिक्स एट अध्याय में श्लोक तो नहीं पढ़ूंगा पर उसका भावार्थ ये है कि कर्तव्य एवं अधिकार राइट एंड द ड्यूटीज तलवार व ढाल की भांति एक दूसरे के पूरक है अतः छात्रों को तदनुसार व्यवहार करना चाहिए तो ये एजुकेशन तो उसे बचपन से मिलनी चाहिए बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली नाउ द यंग जनरेशन इज मच मोर अवेयर अबाउट देयर राइट्स राधर देन देयर ड्यूटीज सो ये कहीं ना कहीं हमारे एजुकेशन में कमी रही जो बचपन से ही हम उनको नहीं दे पा रहे हैं इसी प्रकार एक शांति मंत्र हुआ करता था ओम स नानो वतु स नो भुवंतु स वीर करवा वही उसका भावार्थ था कि शिक्षक एवं विद्यार्थी साथ रहे साथ सीखे चर्चा करें और साथ ही उन्नत हो साथ ही विकसित हो ये उद्देश्य था शिक्षा का बट अगेन द इंटरेक्शन पार्ट बिटवीन द स्टूडेंट्स एंड टीचर हेज टेकन द बैक सीट वेदर दिस इंटरेक्शन इज बिटवीन स्टूडेंट और टीचर और इंडस्ट्री एंड इंस्टीट्यूट ऑल आर लेकिंग द ऑल आर रिसीविंग द बैक सीट लाइक वाइज वेनी ग्रेट पर्सनैलिटीज have put forward their expectation from the education i would like to quote few of them sir uh, albert einstein said that the education is not the learning of facts but the training of mind to think kya ab hum hamari shiksha pranali pe nazar dale kya hum students ko is hisab se prepare kar pa rahe ki rather than learning are we training them to think no humne at present what we have done we have converted the education from learning based to memorizing based maga jisko bolte hain mugging us pe kahin na kahin humne evaluate karna bhi start kiya aur kahin na kahin unko iske liye prerit kiya to system hamara hi doshi hai sir ab ravindra tagore ki quote pe jaye they started that education system should be able to make our life in harmony with all existence तो वो बात करते हैं कि एक सामंजस्य एक एक हारमोनी होनी चाहिए विद ऑल एग्जिस्टेंस इसीलिए सस्टेनेबिलिटी की प्रॉब्लम आ जा रही है जो हमारा डेवलपमेंट जो है विकास जो है विनाश की तरफ बढ़ता जा रहा है सर इसी प्रकार कलाम साहब ने शिक्षा प्रणाली से इनोवेशन और क्रिएटिविटी की उम्मीद करी थी वही स्वामी विवेकानंद ने करेक्टर बिल्डिंग की बात करी उनने स्टेज दिया कि करेक्टर बिल्डिंग इज द रूट एजुकेशन विच शुड बी प्रोवाइडेड टू द चिल्ड्रन राइट फ्रॉम द स्कूल एजुकेशन पर दुर्भाग्यवश समय के साथ हम शिक्षा के इन मूल उद्देश्यों से भटकते चले गए सर साथ ही हमारी अमूल्य जो समृद्ध पुरातन संस्कृति थी उससे भी कहीं ना कहीं डिसकनेक्ट होते चले गए थैंक्स टू एन ईपी इन विच दीज शोर्ट कमिंग्स ऑफ प्रेजेंट एजुकेशन सिस्टम है so this is what i would like to say that what this school education should include so that these points can be covered and students can be trained in that direction sir this is my submission <clears throat> thank you professor suneja for highlighting the gaps and the uh, you know significant significance of schooling and the new responsibilities especially when nuclear family system has been yes. practiced in indian uh, families and societies as well because uh, rightly said the first school is your home so we are unfortunately not getting what is needed to be imparted at root level or grassroots level or the first level rather zeroth level so that is our home so home is the first institution so unfortunately right kind of teaching uh, through references through observation is missing and that is where uh, you know the blunder is happening yes then because of that right foundation neev ली हुई है ये नीव टेढ़ी रखी हुई है सो दैट इज वन पॉइंट अनदर पॉइंट यू राइटली साइड अबाउट हाउ टू थिंक वी आर टीचिंग स्टूडेंट्स टू लर्न टू मग अप और टू अक्वायर सर्टेन सेट ऑफ स्किल्स रादर देन ट्रेनिंग देम और टीचिंग देम और मेकिंग देम अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू थिंक वॉट टू थिंक रादर देन मियरली यू नो 
adopting uh, learning mugging up through some external agencies institutions or forced mechanisms so the process of learning is uh, quite uh, you know slow gradual or uh, in a sense uh, you can say it is natural it should not be uh, a force in a force mechanism of yes. course certain aids are always needed but aids should not be the first way of uh, uh, learning process so coming to now dr ramanathan uh, you can take your time to elaborate on that mm. so education it is said that education is a progressive discovery of your own ignorances the whole purpose of education is to turn mirrors into windows mm. so how school education can be refocused for self reliance in a child for exploring journey of self because god has blessed us you know uh, certain days or years to spend on this planet called earth so unfortunately we are uh, missing that objective that we are a traveler we need to be uh, you know acquire certain things we need to give it back to the society and planet earth and rather than that we are just busy in, uh, you know adopting acquiring building some uh, materialistic things so it, though it's a journey of self so connecting school education to exploration of journey of self dr ramanathan uh, thank you puneet and i think this is uh, uh, first of all i want to compliment dr suneja for very beautifully uh, expounding on the importance of integrity values character building Uh, and all of that which should be an integral part of what the school teaches it is not just knowledge that you are disseminating to the student but why are you acquiring the knowledge and how do you apply that knowledge for practical purposes for the benefit of yourself and society and i think also the the point that he made that you know when 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 you are growing up if you want to become a wholesome human being if you want to become uh, a a human being who is going to Uh, really make their presence felt in the world and that's what every one of us should aspire for i mean we have come into this world and we there is a process of self discovery and there is also a process of discovery of the rest of the world and how we can become an integral part of whatever progress is happening in the world in a very positive manner now if you want to do that it is a combination of not just being able to think differently not just being able to um you know uh, apply the concepts that you are learning in a classroom to in a very practical manner of how it is being used and how or how it can be used but it is also a question of stimulating that creativity in you and that creativity leads to greater curiosity about what the world is all about uh, what is what is it that we are seeing what are some of the challenges we are seeing what are the problems we are seeing why should these problems exist if you look at the progress of the world it is always the people who have been asking this question why when newton looked at the apple is falling down on his head he asked why is the apple falling down and it's not going up you know and that led to the great uh, theory of great, uh, gravity and everyone who has contributed to the world has asked this question why whereas in our schools today when somebody asks the, the student may ask a question which will be so apparent or so it, it it may even look um very stupid but to that child that it is asking a fundamental question you know why is this happening or what exactly is happening and we have to encourage in our schools that ability of the teacher to respond to this rather than saying you have to keep quiet and you have to just listen to what i am saying that's what is happening in most of our schools so there is an enormous paradigm shift that is required uh in uh, not only in the students life but also in the teachers life and the school management to ensure that this curiosity is once again triggered in the child so that innovation and creativity are allowed to blossom now i just want to share you know i have always believed in this and i want to say this when a child is born uh, it is the most innovative the child is the most innovative creature on earth look at the child you are not able to talk to it you are not able to uh the child is not able to stand it's not able to walk it's looking at the world around you right and there is no communication possible the child is not able to communicate with you you are not able to communicate with the child but the child observes the world and when it observes the world and it looks at people are walking so it stands up the child falls down you stand up again you fall down again but every time you stand up you innovate 
and by innovating you are innovating from through your own native intelligence so that capacity is there in the human being to innovate by observation and to be able to correct yourself and to be able to improve similarly and then soon you start walking you start running uh, you start participating in races uh, you represent the nation you go to olympics and look at this transformation that has happened it is all continuous innovation and that continuous innovation is is created and triggered by just the ability to observe and wanting to improve upon you know raising the own their own bar you look at sachin tendulkar he didn't become a great cricketer just like that he was practicing till the last day of his retirement for 6 hours at the net now why would you you so how can one say that he was a genius or he was a creative batsman and we cannot become a sachin tendulkar you can only say that if you are not been doing that you are not been doing what he is doing right the discipline is required so uh, similarly talking the the child just observes the world around and then you see uh, it sees the lips moving it sees sounds coming out and then it says can i also do the same thing and then the child starts speaking and then it's, you can't stop it from speaking and it starts singing and so on so the most innovative part of the child is when you allow the child to learn through experiential um, sensory okay. touch observation feeling and so on and so forth somewhere in the school once we the, the child goes to the school uh, we somehow suppress all of that we in fact make them make the child sit in a desk and listen to one sided conversation or or a pouring of information and all this ability of the child to observe to play with to tinker with to feel to learn i mean we all know that an experience is worth uh, you know uh, um, they say as a a visual uh, sight is worth a thousand words and uh, an experience is is worth a thousand visual uh, sights so when you experience something the amount of learning that you get is enormous that is what we need to bring back into our school life that's what we need to ensure that a child is able to experientially learn right now uh, today we have uh, the great help of technology to be able to experientially learn whether it is uh, you know the tinkering labs that are being set up by atal innovation mission across the country and which is what the nep 2020 is now focusing on nep 2020 has said how do you stimulate this creativity or the urge for learning new things is when you allow the child to play with and tinker with uh, the latest of technologies or tools uh, that are available to you in order to stimulate that creativity right and that's why these tinkering labs are becoming uh, so popular and we have been able to implement more than 10000 tinkering labs in atal innovation mission what is not the setting up of the lab we also had physics lab chemistry lab uh, biology labs and all of that but in all of these labs there is a structured process of interaction and learning human human beings learn a lot through unstructured processes too right when you just allow them to play with something so when in a innovation lab you go and you allow the child like a lego kit which is just given to a child right and then the lego kit the, the child starts trying to build everything by by itself uh, and that is what stimulates the creativity so it can see a child's uh, mind is so fresh and so uncorrupted that you are now able to trigger new questions uh, in in the child's mind and thereby new solutions for problems that you may not have thought you may have uh, you have limited yourself when you're thinking that i cannot do this i cannot do that for example when you go, i mean look at most of the people who are going into the industry from our, from the university they just align themselves to uh, resign themselves to a job where someone has to tell them what to do they do it very well of course you know we our it its industry which is 190 billion dollar industry has grown up because of this focus of rote learning that uh, uh, mr suneja uh, just now referred to we are, rote learning has enabled us to qualify ourselves very well and when we qualify ourselves very well of course we can do a job which is told to us how you have to do it so we can do it very efficiently but is that fully capturing your potential as a human being no it is actually underestimating your potential and your creative ability so in your job how do you become more innovative how do you become more creative that is where experiential learning in addition to knowledge that is being disseminated in the school enables you to tie these things together and that's why in this tinkering lab we have 3d printing robotics iot miniaturized electronics augmented virtual reality which has become affordable 
they become accessible, they become available, and they become advanced. So when you have affordable, accessible, available, and advanced technology through do-it-yourself kits, you give it to the kids, their creativity is unleashed. And when the creativity is unleashed, it is amazing. It is really amazing to see the type of innovations that they come up for problems that they see in and around the community we live in. And that is what will create the future job creators, not only in India, but across the world. You know, we need to stimulate this uh, um, spirit of entrepreneurship that I can create something, not that I will just do something that is being told to me. I can be a creator. I can be an innovator. I can be uh, um, a person who can, and not just in, in, in work, uh, it could be in sports, it could be in music, it could be in arts, it could be in prose, it could be in poem. Unleash that creativity that is latent within you and allow it expression rather than feeling that, you know, I this is a work of genius. Some, some person sitting in a lab is only capable of thinking about this. And, and that is exactly what the school should do. It should empower this child through a combination of experiential and theoretical knowledge uh, to unleash that creativity and enable this child to rise to their full potential. Now, this is what happens in advanced countries where, uh, you know, education is looked as a tool for empowerment, whether it is in Sweden or whether it is in the United States, uh, the opportunity to experiment and play and, and think on your own, as uh, Professor Suneja said, you know, the ability to think on your own rather than being told how to think. Once you are able to trigger that, then the results are going to be stupendous. And you're not going to see the problems that you're seeing today in today's world. And India has a great opportunity because we are a very young country. We have 1.3 billion people with 65% under 35 years old. We have more than 50% under 25 years old. I mean, that's such a youthful energy in this country. That's a transformative power. And if that power is controlled and not allowed to express itself, it's a great loss to the world. Forget about uh, India. So we need uh, in our educational system to ensure that that transformative power is unleashed and it is able to have a profound effect. Uh, you know, as he said, climate change is a big, big issue and the world is screaming for solutions. Uh, there have been old solutions and those solutions have to be changed because of uh, the issues that are coming up. We want to preserve our planet and therefore mm. it gives great opportunity for mm. innovation and for addressing the demand. And that is what this particular school education should, uh, should enable. And that should be kept at the, at the top of your mind, you know, uh, from the school management level. And the NEP 2020 rightly focuses on all of this. So I think this is very important and, and we need to ensure that uh, that combination of experiential and uh, theoretical knowledge uh, is, is allowed. And more importantly, curiosity is given free expression. You know, that is very important. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. Well, well quoted, uh, curiosity is a free expression. And this is, the learning is an organic process. Don't be in a hurry to learn. You know, let the things get absorbed in your mind and in your body and soul. So uh, you have focused on experiential learning. Would like to mention here uh, one achievement of... Uh, Dr. Ramanathan, that he has been, uh, he's on the front page of the magazine, The Great Leaders, and uh, the success story of his leadership at uh, Atal Tinkering Lab, Atal Innovation Mission. It is there, the Atal Innovation Mission, uh, Director Ramanathan. This uh, magazine has covered <coughs> uh, the, his contributions uh, in this particular magazine, and he's on the cover page. So, an, an Indian being featured in a U.S. magazine and being on the cover page. Many congratulations, uh, Dr. Ramanan. Proud of you, sir. Thank you. Thank you sir. <clears throat> so, uh, coming back, sir, uh, to uh, Suneja, sir. Sir. Uh, I hope the screen is now off. No, it's coming, sir. Okay, just a moment. Share the screen. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Now coming to Professor Suneja sir, only change is the permanent thing in life. True. In previous two years, we have witnessed many changes in the process of learning and teaching as well. So now students, they're moving back to school after almost 
two years gap. They, we have experimented, might be a few experiments were successful uh, in the process of learning and might be some were not that effective. So now moving back to school after a long, long pandemic, what are the challenges for students, parents, and teachers, especially at school level? Sunejya, sir. Yeah, thank you, Puneeji. And uh, before that, uh, I would like to convey my uh, gratitude, rather thanks for explaining to Dr. Ramnan, for explaining these two important issues, creativity and the innovation. And sir, you have not only raised the problem only, but you have provided the direction that how we can incorporate, implement and achieve these issues or these objectives at the school level itself. So very wonderfully explained, sir. And this problem, sir, uh, not only exists at the school level, sir, we have faced in college level also, sir. In the technical education, the policy makers have put 40% weightage of the practical labs, right, sir? Mm. And we have seen that what happened to them, sir. We had a manual that was in the experiment, which was in the empty table, and there was a reading. That's what we have done in the practical, sir. So in that way, we, we molded all the things. सोच कुछ और होती है इम्प्लीमेंटेशन कहाँ जाके गलत हो जाता है सर। नाउ कमिंग तू बैक तू द पुनीत सर व्हाट एवर यू रेज गोइंग बैक तू स्कूल दैट तू आफ्टर अलमोस्ट टू इयर्स ऑफ ब्रेक आउट ब्रेक ऑफ कोरोना सीम्स क्वाइट चैलेंजिंग सर। अलमोस्ट ऑल एट अलमोस्ट ऑल द फ्रंट्स लाइक फॉर स्ट Though the students are quite happy to interact, they are going to interact with their classmates, teachers, and to remain away from the home for a few hours. So that happiness is there among the child, children. But students may face some problems, sir, which I would like to point out, like socio-emotional problem or fear and anxiety, sir, which they have passed during the last two years. They need a lot of efforts for adjusting the new environment and restoring their routine, which has got disturbed. Na khane ka pata tha, na sone ka pata tha, jab marji aati thi, sote thi, jo marji aati thi, jab marji aati thi, khate thi, hai na sir? So ye unka routine ho gaya tha, jisko wapis se revive karna aur ek regular routine mein aana, that's a big challenge for the students, sir. So iske liye nishchit rup se, sir, we have to make a joint effort at the war वारफुट लेवल सर कि बच्चों को पुणे स्कूल में आने को तो जो हमने सोचा है उसको हम सार्थकता प्रदान कर पाएं उसको हम अचीव कर पाएं छात्रों को अपनी दिनचर्या में सुधार कर उनके मन से कोविड का सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग का मास का ये फियर निकालना जरूरी है क्योंकि पिछले दो सालों से यही सुनते आ रहे हैं कि सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग यदि उनमें किसी विशेष कोई कमजोरी रहे क्योंकि every student is not comfortable with the online education sir we have evaluated them online we have educated them online so the first task of the school and school administration is to judge their level of understanding of the previous classes because we have to bring the whole class at the same level then we can we can move further so that's a big challenge for the teacher so they can give some assignment, some test for the different subjects to judge their learning or understanding level for that subject so that we can move forward comfortably. So that's one of the big challenge. Iske alawa, sir, jo hai, vidyarthi apne aapko online siksha mein abhyast nahi kar paaye. Unke liye alag se hume classes lagani padengi, jo abhi bhi lagti hai, the special classes for weak students. तो इस तरह का भी हमें प्रयास करना होगा ताकि पूरी क्लास को एट पार हम ला सकें। टीचर के लिए एक मुश्किल टास्क होता है सर क्लास को जो है फेस ऑब्जर्वेशन बच्चों से जो इंटरैक्टिव बनाना क्लास को डेट इस मेक द क्लास इंटरेस्टिंग एंड मोर यूजफुल और जब चेहरे पर मास्क लगे हुए होंगे तो मुझे नहीं लगता कि जब उसकी फेस ऑब्जर्वेशन जब नहीं ले पाएगा तो बड़ा एक डल सा माहौल होगा क्लास का तो दैट दिस इस अ बिग चैलेंज फॉर द टीचर्स टू इनोवेट सम आइडिया हाउ टू इंटरैक्ट हाउ टू ऑब्जर्व हिज फेस एक्सप्रेशन विद द मास 
so that he can uh, keep the change the pace or the uh, level pace or the, of the teaching accordingly whether students are understanding or not itna hi nahi sir school ke samay mein bhi classes for weak student and activities for physical and mental health ka slot hame nikalna hoga kyunki these are two important things for which college and administ uh, school administration should look into that how we can spare few hours for the uh, activities for physical and mental health <coughs> साथ ही पेरेंट टीचर इंटरेक्शन की जो फ्रीक्वेंसी है उसको बढ़ाना होगा सो दैट वी कम टू नो द व्हाट द प्रॉब्लम्स स्टूडेंट्स आर फेसिंग हाउ टू मेक देम फ्रेंक इन एक्सप्लेनिंग देयर प्रॉब्लम सो इस की फ्रीक्वेंसी जो है जो पेरेंट टीचर मीटिंग होती है इसकी बढ़ानी पड़ेगी चाहे ऑनलाइन करें चाहे फिजिकल मोड में करें बट इसकी फ्रिक्वेंसी बढ़ाना बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि ये एक ज्वाइंट एफर्ट होगा एट द फ्रंट ऑफ पेरेंट्स टीचर एज वेल एज स्कूल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग क्लास में मेंटेन करते हुए नंबर ऑफ क्लासेस विल इंक्रीज सो अकॉर्डिंगली द स्कूल दैट दैट अगेन अ बिग चैलेंज विद इन द सेम फाइनेंशियल कंस्टेंट दे हैव टू इंक्रीज द नंबर ऑफ क्लासेस हैज द नंबर ऑफ टीचर्स ऑब्वियसली टू टीच देम जुडिशियसली इसी तरह कुछ एक्टिविटीज एंटरटेनिंग एक्टिविटीज पे भी स्ट्रेस देना पड़ेगा सो दैट स्टूडेंट कैन री गेन अगेन द इंटरेस्ट for coming to the school so kuch is tarah ki jo entertaining activities hain unko bhi hame enforce karna chahiye emotional problem fear and anxiety jo kisi bhi disaster ke pashchat koi sa bhi disaster ho sir ye problem jo hoti hain that are the long term problem which exist for a longer period to iske liye zaruri hai ki alag se koi counselor ya health workers ya doctors ki visit regular visit शेड्यूल की जाए और ऐसे लड़कों को आइडेंटिफाई किया जाए ताकि उनकी काउंसलिंग कर सके और वो इस तरह के वातावरण से उभर सके कुल मिलाकर बैक टू स्कूल के चैलेंजेस को वी कैन फेस विद द जॉइंट एफर्ट एट ऑल द थ्री लेवल्स एट द स्टूडेंट टीचर्स पेरेंट्स एज वेल एज एट द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन सर सो दिस इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू से थैंक यू यस प्रोफेसर साहब राइटली सेट because after every disaster it takes time to come back to the normal life normal life so uh, many of those who took birth uh, four years five years back they were supposed to start their schooling you know being with the peer group learning through mistakes falling you know and uh, the process of uh, socializing they all have missed all that the physical yeah. activity especially so this is going to be a you know uh, a difficult task cannot be uh, an easy task to accommodate all of sudden uh, a new way of learning and uh, i'm sure but the with the support of the, uh, parents and uh, teachers uh, they will come up uh, with the process of learning and coming to uh, dr romanan uh, technology has aided our life in a great sense beat mobile phone or modes of transport wherever all the spheres of life are affected improved with the aid of technology so now if you look 10 years back the mode of education was purely on textbook mode or purely on uh, face to face interaction mode now education has come from brick to click so even anybody anywhere any time can learn whatever he or she wants to learn one may learn from a professor learned professor of iit or iim or wherever across the globe on a single click on the mobile or palm top or laptop so this is a great relief for the people those who are living in the remotest areas or where accessibility is less uh, for school uh, ed education so uh, your take on that in what way uh, this new ad tech companies or new technological tools they will help a learner which is in remote area or an edu uh, adult education i mean somebody might have left a school or college education in between and wants to restart will it uh, will it be effective as good as a classroom teaching your take on that yeah thank you punit and uh... 
Uh, first, I want to, you know, you you started off in the last question to Bharatji yeah. saying change yeah. is only constant. And uh, I just want to add, uh, looked at it another way, uncertainty is the only certainty that we have in life. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, that's and right. we, we have been talking about one pandemic which has completely disrupted life across the world, right? It has disrupted supply chains, it has created national lockdowns, uh, it has created school lockdowns, it has created so much uncertainty about now what about when is this going to end and when is the next pandemic going to come you know what are the variants of this pandemic and what about climate change issues which are you know we have not yet phased in its full force and how if they manifest themselves how are we going to deal with it so suddenly i think the world has woken up to the fact that we live in a very what they call as the wuka world you know volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous uh, and how do you deal in such a world, right? And I think if at all anything came out of this pandemic, anything positive came out of this pandemic, it is the fact that technology can be a great leveler in being able to deal with these uncertainties. And how do you leverage technology most effectively in order to yeah. do that? Now, I think the challenges that uh, uh, Bharatji so beautifully pointed out for the teacher, for the student, for the parent, you know, Take, for example, he says everybody is wearing a mask. So how do you judge what the child is, uh, whether they are learning, whether, you know, how do you interpret the child's uh, understanding and so on? It's such a practical problem that we are, we are talking about, right? So uh, one thing that came out in this entire pandemic is the role of digital technology and digital transformations that enabled us to deal with it. I think 10 years ago, we would never have been able to deal it we deal with this problem the same way that we were able to deal with it now. Whether it was, you know, um, online education, whether it was uh, still keeping the students engaged through uh, the internet and World Wide Web. Uh, for example, it, in ATL, we launched, we immediately saw, I mean, look, if, if you look at ATL, it is a very experiential process, right? But we use this pan pandemic because people are not able to go to school to come up with tools which are simulation tools. How do you simulate uh, IoT behavior, how do you simulate, uh, you know, a 3D printer uh, and how do you create 3D designs? So we launched a series of online ATL tinkering modules, which were received tremendously by the students as well as the teachers. The teachers used that uh, time to educate themselves on these new technologies and yes. new age technologies that are that are uh, coming out uh, in, in the open. And similarly, the students got a chance to do you know, how do you do painting using uh, Microsoft Paint, for example, you know, things like that. So uh, the uh, even the artistic element of a child found itself expression through technology. So technology and digital technologies have enabled reach. They have enabled faster communication. They have enabled your screen in your house to become the portal for a global classroom. Yes. And that is the difference. And that is what we need to capitalize on as we move forward. I think the problems that uh, Professor Suneja said that you know the psychological impact of a child not interacting right. with other children, that has to be, that's why you need physical classes, you need physical schools, you need that interaction, which is so very important in a child's life. You know, you cannot live, the child cannot be living in an augmented rea virtual reality world. And, and if you're just sitting at home and you're learning online, uh, this is not a solution for the future. What we need is a blend of online learning and offline learning. Uh, and this blend of online and offline is going to be the reality of the future. And it's going to come tremendously to the advantage of everybody. Why? Because you have today satellite technology, which is enabling you to reach to the, uh, I mean, where there is no communication link possible or where there are hilly uh, or coastal districts, you are able to use satellite technology and satellite technology is going to become more innovative. You can have interactive satellite technology. Why do you just have one-way satellite technology? So you can have an interactive classroom, for example, with a set-top TV type of box, which will enable the child uh, to interact even through uh, distance learning. The second is your classroom you know, can become, like I said, a global classroom. You have access to uh, teaching uh, materials as well as teaching uh, you know, teachers. Uh, who are not necessarily in your city or your village, uh, but their courses are available to you. And you can have this interactive courses. And that's what actually happened during this pandemic. So many students got an opportunity to hear from global speakers, not just from 
you know, speakers in India or not from their city. So suddenly their knowledge, um, you know, acquisition capability as well as the knowledge dissemination capability has increased tremendously. Third, uh, you know, going forward, take for example, 3D printing. Uh, it's such a powerful tool. Every school should now use 3D printers for teaching. And what do I mean by that? Take for, you know, a 3D printer can easily create a, a geographic map. If you want to learn about uh, America or you want to learn about the soil in, in uh, uh, let's say, Rajasthan and the various layers of soil below the desert, uh, you can create a 3D printed mold and show to the student, this is how things are. Now you are you are living in Tamil Nadu. You don't know what a desert looks like, and you are using 3D printing to create a geographic map and show that mold because it is so easily printable. And you can do that for anything. A human body. You want to teach about the lungs and the heart. I mean, we used to learn from the textbook uh, by looking at diagrams, but now you can have a 3D view of the entire um, uh, you know human body, and therefore the student's ability to understand, to grasp all of these. Excellent using AR technology, using VR technology. If you are studying about uh, the human body and you have an augmented reality um, you know, image of the whole human body, uh, you are able to now understand the entire okay. thing much better uh, than a theoretical description and a wordy description of whatever you're doing. If you want to look at plant life and how plant life evolves, uh, you know there are beautiful uh, illustrations using AR, VR. If you want to extend collaboration, you have now tools by which school students from one school can collaborate with students from another school. And that's what happening in the Atal Innovation Mission. Using the net, uh, we are able to create a project team uh, which is com composed of school students from one school and another school. Now that diversity of thinking and that diversity of interaction uh, is now enabling and for girls and boys also to interact using the online medium in many schools which are still just boys schools or girls schools you are not promoting this collaboration and communication between uh, you know uh, two um, the male and a female child which which is totally unnecessary you know the, the richness of interaction and the richness of learning and the diversity of uh, thinking gets enhanced when you create uh, teams uh, which are you know extending beyond your own boundaries so this is what technology is enabling. 5G technology is going to enable large amounts of data to be transmitted at lightning speeds. And sensor technologies, uh, IoT technologies are going to help you uh, to understand you know, how uh, you are able to use this for a variety of purposes, uh, whether it is uh, you know, monitoring the classroom. So for example, the, the parent uh, may be interested you know, in, in sometimes getting a view of what is happening or an interaction with the teacher uh, or uh, when the child, you know, from a safety purpose, as a child reads the school and so on and so forth, they can be equipped in buses and so on and so forth. So that today you're able to track, right? Just now, uh, for example, if you're traveling by Uber, uh, your uh, son or daughter is able to uh, put the tracker on and you know that this uh, car has reached this destination and the person has uh, completed the trip. Now that sort of knowledge was missing in those days. If somebody, uh, you send somebody by a taxi, you would feel very unsafe, uh, a small child or a six year old, uh, or a six standard kid. If they're taking a taxi, you'll be very worried. But now with Uber and tracking mechanisms, uh, you even know the driver, the vehicle and everything. And so, you know, security gets enhanced. So how do you leverage technology to the hilt in being able to enhance the quality of education the reach of education, the quality of teaching, and the ability of experts and mentors to greater to participate in a greater process. Uh, I think Professor Suneja rightly referred that in the in the way forward, there has to be a lot of interaction between the parent and the teacher because they are trying to fill a gap which has been created by a two-year gap gap of COVID. Now, how do you ensure that that gap is filled? without a strong interaction between the teacher and the parent, because the parent, uh, you know, there may be psychological issues which have to be dealt with. And there, there is supplemental uh, training that can be given to the parents to deal with this particular situation yeah, of, you sure. know, student. you can't say you don't know anything for two years, you know, uh, how can I promote you? I mean, instead of creating a situation where the student gets even 
more disenchanted with the educational system, you have to encourage the child yes, and you have yes. to make sure that, you know, they feel very positive about coming back to school and not get a negative feeling or an inferiority complex that now yes. I don't know the subject and somebody else has studied the subject because they had yes. access to superior educational aids. So that sort of interaction is possible now with online training. The teacher can know, the student, the parent can know that this is how my child is performing and this is the additional support that I need to provide and so on and so forth. So there is a huge um, impact of technology, uh, both in terms of, and then the inclusivity part, you know, we, we talk about gender equality, NEP 2020 talks about three very important things yes. this time. One is the inclusivity, second is the access, and third is the financial okay. support that is required for uh, the entire schooling system to reach high quality. And that means, stakeholder partnership industry has to play a very important role because finally they are the recipients of all the students and if yeah. they are not playing a role in ensuring that your school in your locality is getting supported by the industry then who else is going to support it can't be government which is just doing all of this stuff so this whole bringing together the teacher uh, the student the parent and bringing together uh, different stakeholders academia government and industry that is what technology can enable in a, in a very superior manner and be able to address many of the gaps or the challenges that Professor Suraj talked about. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramanan. Uh, rightly said that use of 3D printing technology to create objects which are uh, three dimensional in nature will help students to understand the whole mechanism, process, different layers like a human body or what is there beneath the soil or the road. Mm -hmm. You know, there is always a curiosity. How come, in what way the water is coming out from uh, uh, an um, ascent? So there are different layers. What is beyond the rocks? So Correct. many curiosities. One, one, one more thing I wanted to uh, yeah. share, which I, uh, which I should have mentioned. You see, until about 2006, uh, we had something called the 1010 rule. And the 1010 rule was that any innovation that got created uh, used to take 10 years before it became mainstream. Now, yeah. example, yeah. when black and white TV was introduced, it almost took 10 years. You know, for 10 years, each of us were looking at somebody else's house's TV. Then by in 10 years, if you look at actually historical numbers and data, you'll find that it took 10 years for it to become mainstream. Similarly, even though color TV got introduced, it took 10 years to become mainstream again. Right? Yeah. And then when HD TV was introduced, it became 10 years to go mainstream again. But in 2006, something amazing happened. Uh, the, from the 1010 rule, the World Wide Web suddenly came into being and it became a one-one rule. And that is, any innovation had the opportunity and the ability to become mainstream in one year. And yeah. YouTube was the first example. As soon as YouTube was introduced, YouTube was not as remarkable an innovation as uh, HDTV. It was not even as complex as that. But it brought many aspects together and created multiple, you know, address multiple needs of people. Uh, so, for example, academicians like uh, the Khan Academy, they use YouTube for teaching. Uh, I mean, he started off saying, how can I use YouTube to teach my nephew on math and physics and so on? And see where Khan Academy reached within one or two years. Uh, they, become a global, they became a global organization, which was funded by so, so many companies. Similarly, you know, YouTube allowed people not only to create content, but to edit content. Uh, so it created editors, it created um, creative, uh, um, uh, you know, technicians. It, so it addressed multiple jobs. And that is what the World Wide Web, uh, you know, has enabled. And so today, if you see Facebook and all of these technologies which are becoming mainstream or any technology has the opportunity to become mainstream in one year. So that means tremendous power to the young student to innovate and create an impact or for any one of us to create an impact. Now that is being possible, made possible because of technology. And therefore, if we don't leverage this uh, advantageously and intelligently, it is ours to lose. Thank you, Ramiran. Thank you. One more important uh, learning uh, that Uncertainty is the only certainty in life. <laughs> and uh, the new thing, 10, 10 rule and 1, 1 rule. Thank you for those teachings. Uh, coming to Professor Suneja. Yes, Technology sir. is a great enabler, rightly said by Dr. Ramanan. 
so uh, so 30 years back or 40 years back or like that coaching or tuition used to be an aid for learning process parents those who are unable to devote time or the difficulty level of any subject is high or a student is unable to cope up to the uh, difficulty level of a particular subject such kind of students used to avail coaching or tuition facility but then gradually it became fancy or ultimately a necessity or rather a social reputation that if you are not going to a particular coaching institution you may or may not be successful or even pass the examination such kind of psychological or emotional needs were created that it is necessary you know it used to be just like a package this kind of a school this kind of coaching then there is a guarantee of success but there was no guarantee of success the guarantee lies in you if you do it you will attain if you do not do nothing is there so in what way we can and unfortunately we have lost many brilliant students uh, by the way of you know they have committed suicide out of uh, yes. social pressure or they couldn't cope up that kind of pressure or they were not interested at all because it is not like putting an injection of coaching and you know making something in the beginning we have already discussed this is a organic process experiential learning so in what way we can eradicate or minimize the need of coaching or tuition for curriculum based learning because curriculum based learning schools are already there universities are already there uh, academic institutions are already there agreed for certain specific purpose or focused process of learning like civil services or a gate or any competitive examination one may like to go through because that kind of teaching is not there in academic institution the purpose of academic institution to impart education for different purpose for when you are writing a competitive exam examination you are competing with others might might be only 1000 let us say 900 civil servants will be selected so you will be competing so many and you will be amongst 900 so you may require a specific or focused or a specialized training or coaching for to attain success in a particular entrance examination but obviously not for curriculum based uh, learning so how can we eradicate or minimize the need of this coaching or tuition for any individual being uh, professor sunil ji thank you uh, punit ji uh, being from kota i was expecting that question to <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it happens always sir uh, इससे पहले कि मैं एक किस्सा बयां करूं पहले तो मैं रमनन साहब के उस पर थोड़ा सा कमेंट करना चाहूंगा कि यू राइटली सेड देयर इज नो हंड्रेड परसेंट सब्सटीट्यूट ऑफ क्लासरूम टीचिंग सर ऑफ कोर्स विद द एडवांसमेंट इन टेक्नोलॉजी वन शुड इवॉल्व द जुडिशियस कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ बोथ दीज टू आई एम श्योर दैट द अटल मिशन ऑफ विच यू आर वन ऑफ द बैकबोन सर विल प्ले एन इम्पोर्टेंट एंड ट्रिमेंडस रोल in achieving this target of this judicious combination so thank you sir for your learning and uh, now come to the question which raised by punit ji mere ko sir jahan jata hu ye jaise hi bolta hu kota se to coaching ka zikr zarur chalta hai sir ek bar to main iit kanpur mein koi course attend karne gaya tha then there was uh, professor sudhir jain was there at that time who is now vice honorable vice chancellor of bhu So, uh, जैसे उनको पता चला अरे तुम कोटा से हो अरे तुमने बर्बाद कर दिया यार बच्चों को मैंने कहा सर क्या हो क्या गया सर कि नहीं 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 दे लॉस्ट ऑल एनालिटिकल पावर एंड द द टॉपर ऑफ द जे इज नॉट परफॉर्मिंग लाइक अ टॉपर ऑफ जे विच यूज टू परफॉर्म अर्लियर दैट ट्रू सर लेकिन आपको ये भी तो सोचना पड़ेगा कि आप भी तो क्रीम सेलेक्ट कर रहे हैं थ्रू सम एग्जामिनेशन सिस्टम and if somebody has entered into your uh, this uh, evolution system then you should think of you make the changes in your ki you have rightly said ek time tha sir jab ek ek question jab je ka decide hota tha to din bhar lag jata tha sir panch che professor baithte the nahi ye yon pucho yon pucho aur aajkal to 2 ghante mein paper ban ke aa jata hai kisi ke paas bhejo to to ye changes to aaya hai sir isme to uh, doshi sabhi hain sir अब कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट कोचिंग की जो आपने बात की सर दिस इज अ वेरी सेंसिटिव इशू सेंसिटिव फॉर द कोचिंग इंडस्ट्री राइट द कोटा की जो इकोनॉमी है वो पूरा कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट से गवर्न हो रहा है बट आई पर्सनली डोंट एग्री विद दिस सिस्टम सर मेरे दोनों बच्चों ने भी बीइंग इन कोटा उनने भी कोचिंग लिया पर दैट्स राइट थिंग सर कि द स्टूडेंट्स 
को जो एनालिटिकल खुद की पावर है वो सब उनके खो जाती है और एक उनका टारगेट होता है एडमिशन लेना उसके बाद वो इतना फ्री हो जाता है कि अपना एडमिशन हो गया फ्री उसके बाद कईयों ने कईयों को आई छोड़ते हुए भी देखा है सर और डी ग्रेड लाते हुए भी देखा है सर ये ये फैक्ट है सर आप जो कह रहे हैं कि करिकुलम ये अनफॉर्चुनेट पार्ट यही है सर जो करिकुलम बेस्ड अपने एग्जामिनेशन सिस्टम रखा है ना सर इसीलिए कोचिंग डेवलप हुए हैं क्योंकि उसी करिकुलम में उसको स्ट्रोंग कर रहे हैं सो so, समवेयर हमें इस डायरेक्शन में थोड़ी मेहनत करनी होगी सर कि कैसे बच्चे की लर्निंग या स्किल या इनोवेटिव कैपेसिटी को हम एग्जामिनेशन के थ्रू इवेल्यूट कर पाए क्योंकि हमने हमारे एग्जामिनेशन सिस्टम को ही ऐसा कर दिया कि हम सीधा उसके मेमोराइजिंग बेस्ड इवेल्यूशन हो गया सर रादर देन लर्निंग बेस्ड क्योंकि हम भी उससे थोड़ा पीछा छुड़ा लिया या यूँ कहें कि क्योंकि एथिकल वैल्यूज का तो डिग्रेडेशन हर लेवल पे हुआ है सर चाहे टीचर हों चाहे स्टूडेंट हों तो इस बारे में सीरियसली सोचना होगा सर अब इसके यदि मूल कारण में जाए हम सर तो इसमें सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट जो मैंने नोट किया था सर कि इससे लर्निंग कैपेबिलिटी एक तो ये इशू हुआ कि हमें एग्जामिनेशन सिस्टम को इस तरह इवोल्व करना पड़ेगा कि हम उसके सीखने की उसके लर्न करने की क्या क्षमता है उसको हम इवेल्यूट कर पाए नॉट द मेमोराइजिंग और दूसरा जो कारण है कि हमने जो सर हमारे करिकुलम को इतना लार्ज कर दिया इतना डिटेल्ड कर दिया बच्चे को इतना फोर्स कर दिया कि उसको विद इन स्कूल टाइम कहीं ब्रीदिंग स्पेस नहीं दिया टू एनालाइज द थिंग्स टू थिंक ऑफ हिज ओवन जो आपने बताया सर ने बताया रामनान साहब ने कि वन वे कम्युनिकेशन चल रहा है कि मैं जो बोल रहा हूँ वो सुन ले बस दैट्स द एजुकेशन तो वो तो दबी आएगी सर जब हम उनको सिलेबस को थोड़ा कम करें है ना और मतलब आप देखें सर कोचिंग में फिजिक्स में यदि फ्रिक्शन पढ़ा रहा है तो फ्रिक्शन इतना पढ़ा दिया जाता है कि उसके अलावा फ्रिक्शन में दुनिया में कोई नॉलेज नहीं है इस लेवल की एजुकेशन दे रहे हैं सर जिसकी आवश्यकता नहीं है उस लेवल पे क्योंकि बच्चे की ग्रोथ उसका मानसिक विकास और उसकी लर्निंग कैपेबिलिटी ये धीरे धीरे ग्रो होती है सर यदि आप उसको कम उम्र में इतना लोडेड कर देंगे तो उसकी कहीं ना कहीं वो सफर करेगा अपने खुद की जो उसकी नेचुरल इंस्टिंक्ट है एबिलिटी है वो कहीं ना कहीं सफर करेंगी फ्रिक्शन विल बर्न आउट द कैंडिडेट तो और ये दिस इज फॉर्चुनेट पार्ट की आने वाली जो शिक्षा नीति है उसने इस पर भी पूरा ध्यान दिया है कि किसी तरह भी इंजीनियरिंग का भी हमने 190 से 160 क्रेडिट किया है सर यही सोच के किया था कि बच्चे को खुद क्रिएटिविटी का कुछ टाइम मिले है ना और ये दैट्स अ गुड आइडिया और ये एन के साथ हमें आशा करते हैं कि समय के साथ जो है इसमें परिवर्तन आएगा और यदि हम एग्जामिनेशन सिस्टम को इस हिसाब से करेंगे उसको कंटिन्यूस असेसमेंट करेंगे तो हो सकता है कि कोचिंग से बच्चा थोड़ा दूर जाए ये बात सही है कि कोचिंग बच्चे को जितना सिखा नहीं रहा है उससे उसकी कहीं ना कहीं उसकी एबिलिटी से उसको कंप्रोमाइज करना पड़ रहा है थैंक यू सर इफ इफ आई कैन जस्ट ऐड आई थिंक या श्योर 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 सर या भारत जी हैज रियली ब्रॉट आउट वेरी नाइसली द द चैलेंज एंड द रियल चैलेंज इज योर एजुकेशनल सिस्टम इवैल्यूएशन इज ड्राइविंग दिस कोचिंग या right sure. uh, and and so when you evaluate them in this particular manner where your evaluation is based on rote learning and not really understanding the subject and or being able to apply it for practical uh, you know solutions then automatically you're going to have the thriving of coaching factories uh, across the country and 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 they're going to cater to that demand because the demand you know is driving yeah. the, the situation uh, there are two things i just wanted to share in sure, this uh, on thing one is i think all the right moves are being made through the introduction of tinkering labs and through the focus on what they call as soft skills so you know right. communication skills uh, design thinking skills uh, lateral thinking skills team collaboration skills and ye jo skills hum abhi um, you know we are giving importance to in the school i yeah. think that is going to play an important role in right. the students uh looking at not just rote learning but other ways of expressing their capability and creativity and the teachers also understanding that for example at tinkering labs mein kya hua hai ki we found that many of the best innovations were not coming from the top students they were not yes. coming from who are standing that's first true. to 10 the, the best innovations were coming from students between uh, with 10 uh, back benches and rank uh, you know 20th <laughs> rank or 30th rank in the class right. and 
so obviously suddenly these people who were being considered as uh, quote unquote dull hai ya uh, uh, yeah. not a student they became came into the limelight and the student teacher was encouraging them are next innovation challenge hai so can you please contribute and make exactly. your innovation right? and right. and so so i think this awareness building happens when you start shifting the focus from rote learning to giving expression for the other talent to surface yes. and and children's talent surfaces and that comes to the knowledge and then you realize ki you know this student is have, for example some students have artistic ability which only can surface if you promote art in the you know yeah, art yeah. challenges uh, craft challenges sports challenges स्पीकिंग चैलेंजेस डिबेटिंग चैलेंजेस ये जहां ज्यादा चैलेंजेस हम इंट्रोड्यूस करते हैं अक्रॉस बिकॉज दो चैलेंजेस क्रिएट अ रिकोगशन सिस्टम एंड वेन यू क्रिएट अ रिकोगशन सिस्टम एंड द पेरेंट ऑल्सो वॉन्ट्स टू सपोर्ट दैट द टीचर ऑल्सो वॉन्ट्स टू सपोर्ट दैट द स्कूल ऑल्सो वॉन्ट्स टू सपोर्ट दैट राइट सो समवेयर इन द एंटायर रिकोगशन सिस्टम ऑफ स्कूल स्टूडेंट एंट्रिंग इन टू यूनिवर्सिटी विच इज वॉट in uh, sweden and all they have done this very very successfully they give importance to uh, not just uh, the rote learning capability and the knowledge that the student has but many other all round capabilities which need uh, which can find itself an admission in the university and in good university the good university the good university will ask you to write an essay beyond just what you yeah. uh, what you have scored uh, exams and through that essay they evaluate the the uh, the passion of the student and uh, the interest of the student and they say we want this sort of student dusra kya university mein when they do admission most of the universities for example and these are things which we should learn and and modify in our education system yeah. most of the universities want a diversity of students in their uh, in their university yeah. so they say i we should have the right combination of uh, you know um, academic uh, capability sports capability other capabilities and they will give uh, reserve certain number of slots for such students so that they have a very healthy mix uh, and that diversity is encouraged in the in the university uh, so uh, similarly in our places you know uh, the top university should give credence and give recognition to let's say innovative students coming from the tinkering labs or creative students coming from the arts uh, area and so on so that that is the uh, other important part and yeah. third finally i just wanted to make a mention that this whole coaching should transform itself into mentoring mentoring is very different from coaching and what we need is thousands of mentors who are people like you and me who have you know gone through uh, a certain life experience gained vital knowledge seen what is really important in life and that your education system is just one part yeah. of you yeah. becoming a problem solver in life That's and the problem solving capability and how do you mentor the young student so yeah. that is why in for example adult innovation mission we encourage voluntary mentors and we have now 6000 plus mentors who are associated with just the tinkering lab then you have more than 1000 mentors associated with adult incubators and so on and i tell you these mentors are so excited they have formed groups in every state and every city and they are interacting with each other with each other and they are doing voluntary and now uh, we we were just wanting two or three hours per week but i can i am i'm part of many groups i see them communicating constantly and saying you know this is what we are doing in our school and somebody says can you exchange uh, you know how you have been able to mentor this student and so on and so forth so i think coaching should transform itself into mentoring Good and time. mentoring has to be encouraged across the country sir wonder, uh, wonderful valuable addition sir thank you sir thank you yes, so sir. much yeah just would like to mention here uh, uh, about the technological support in education system uh, the platform where we are talking right now dipya uh, which is uh, uh, an ancillary unit of uh, tiagen technologies they are the pioneer in technology they uh, were technology partner for coven they have developed uh, interactive classrooms setups in andhra pradesh across 4000 zila parishad schools and uh, uh, they are doing phenomenal and they, are, they have not stopped here they are now proceeding to other states as well and trijin uh, ditya is taking the lead to, uh, in propagating uh, technological aid in the schools especially in remote areas 
So uh, coming to uh, your favorite topic, Dr. Ramanan, would like to mention, first of all, that you are quite innovative in your speeches as well. Yeah. I have done so many sessions, but in each session, you always come up with new examples, new stories, uh, and you, you always make it so interesting. And especially, uh, uh, Suneja sir, though it's a first interaction with you, but thanks to you that you are simplify, simplifying things in a, in a great manner. That is a sign of a great teacher that uh, rather than making it complex, make, make it simple. So, uh, Dr. Ramnan, a sense of curiosity is a nature's original school of education. And that sense of curiosity leads to innovation. In, uh, in what way we can foster a culture of entrepreneurship through innovation practices, especially at school level. I think you are the best person uh, in India to uh, speak about this particular question. Dr. Ramanan. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Puneet. And I think this is the most fundamental aspect about uh, how we can transform our educational system by stimulating the sense of curiosity and wonder in a student. The student, when they go to a classroom, they should go intensely curious and intensely with a sense of wonder of something new that they are learning and how they can apply that learning uh, in, in their own imaginative way, right? So, but how do you do it? So, so for example, when we started setting up these tinkering labs, what we realized was it is not just setting up a lab. You can set up a lab and then that lab will not be used. You will have all the equipment there. And uh, you, know, you can say that I have an adult tinkering lab, so what? Right. So what we realized was that four fundamental requirements were one, how do you introduce the power of observation of a student? OK, because observation leads to curiosity. So you need to observe. You need to see. And so we used to challenge the student. We used to launch what is known as a tinkering challenge and uh, every month. And we used to tell the students that we will not give the very specific challenge. We'll say, what are some of the problems? that you are seeing between your school and your home. You're traveling from school to home, or you're traveling from your home to uh, the nearest mall, or you're traveling from the mall to, um, you know, from your home to some hospital which you want to visit, or to the nearest village. What are the problems that you are observing, that you are questioning why should they exist? And so then the students used to go out, fan out, and then they will come back and we used to form groups. Because, you know, whenever you make a student think alone, he becomes, he or she becomes shy, they become diffident, and they, they don't, uh, you know, they also become a little worried, uh, because, you know, the challenge is all on them. But if you form a small group of five or six students, and tell them, you go and observe and come back with your own challenges identified, you know, problems identified. This stimulates, so what we had as the ideation, you know, first problem identification. Once you have the problem identification, Problem identification only can happen when you start observing things properly around you. You know, you're not just uh, uh, with attentively. Uh, you, you can see something, but you're not observing it or you're not paying attention. So this attentive observation and identification of problem. And then we also ask the students, how are you going to solve this problem? You know, what is the solution for the problem? For example, you're seeing a visually challenged person crossing the road. So what is the challenge he, he or she is having? And how do you think you can solve this problem? And how do you use this tinkering labs technology? So you have sensor technology, you have IoT technology, you have software, uh, you have uh, communication technology, you have mobile phones. So how are you going to use it? You have cloud services. So then the students would come and apply their minds. And you know it's a great thing. Uh, they start suddenly seeing new, new ways of solving the problem. So you have to, in order to, First, the curiosity factor comes about, you know, how do I solve the problem? And in order to solve the problem, you start learning. You start, you start seeing what is a 3D printer can be used, how it can be used, how can IoT be used? And so you start discovering more and more. And that discovery leads to more knowledge acquisition because now you are like, you're saying that is, I can use this technology or I can use this mechanism for solving this problem. And so that creates a hunger for more knowledge. So you go and surf in the net, you you uh, you know uh, look at other models that have been created, and then you come back and say, this is how I can do it. Uh, and you have to uh, see it to believe it, uh, Puniji. Um, students came out with amazing innovations. For example, uh, in Salem, in Tutukudi, uh, girls' school comes up with 
a solar panel iot based irrigation management system for the farmers why because they are surrounded all their parents are farmers their parents are facing this constant challenge of irrigation water management electricity management in that coastal district and so they came up with how can we use sensor technology soil health cards which the government is giving and solar panels so that electricity problem is addressed and how do you do precision agriculture that is you only trigger the right amount of water uh, into the fields rather than wasting water and how do you use soil conservation and rain har uh, water harvesting to ensure that you know the water problem is addressed and this is what student eight standard students now imagine an eight standard student girl students in a remote part of the country using technology to create a prototype of an innovation and they also oh. realize that we have to run this solution past uh, the farmers to see whether they will be able to use it so then the farmers got integrated into the process and they gave them valuable feedback that this is what you have to do and this is you know this is uh, this will not work for us or this will can you improvise on this and that began that interaction now imagine the impact of that student that student is not going to become just a job seeker they are going to become the job creators of future because you have instilled in them the curiosity to innovate you have instilled in them the confidence that they can innovate and create something and you have introduced into them the joy of seeing their innovation right. into action and this is what every school has to aspire that their student are in, you know filled with the curiosity that is needed uh, equipped with the knowledge uh, that should accompany it and given the opportunity to innovate and implement it so that it can be recognized and the child becomes now confident that i can become an innovator of the future so that is why you know yes i can you know barack obama's great uh, phase yes i can yes, and I then can. he rose on to become the uh, first black president of, the, of america we want the yes i can attitude to be developed in the children at the school level yeah. because if you don't develop at the school level at the university you are just looking at oh i am not the top ranker i cannot do anything mujhe to kuch settle karna hai aise job mein and even if i get any job it is okay you know you you sort of be little yourself and limit yourself but we allow we want our children to allow their imagination to soar high and to say that they yes i can i can do anything and yeah. and they will good mantra <laughs> wonderful uh, dr ramran i think this is the foremost uh, reform or change or alteration is required in the school education system you know changing the focus or the objective it is not merely about learning it is about your experiences your change the the, the changes you need to bring in your thought process self now, belief for we attempt sir the self before, belief you know is yeah, that, uh, i always often quote uh, vivekananda ji who says you know if you have a belief in a thousand gods and goddesses but do not have belief in yourself you are do <laughs> we need to ensure that every student has this belief in themselves that they are the future transformers of the world good so before we attempt a few questions from the audience is uh, one question last question uh, for you uh, professor sumeja yes. uh, what are the reforms which are there mentioned in net 2020 for school education system as well as in teachers in school education uh <clears throat> sir age we have pointed out so many uh, shortcomings of the present education system one way or other jaisa ki bataya sanskar ya mulya pradan karne wali ho apni samradh puratan sanskriti ko nayi peedhi se jodne ka vishay ho ya shiksha ke sath sath sharirik va mansik vikas sunishchit karne ke prayas ho ya har chhatra ke bhitar chhipi hui jo ek अंतर्मुखी क्रिएटिविटी और स्किल है उसको निखारने का कोई प्लेटफॉर्म हो जैसा अभी सर ने बताया बहुत अच्छी तरह बताया कि बैक बेंचर्स आर द मतलब की पर्सन इन द इनोवेशन और ये सही है सर और इसमें टीचर्स कैन प्ले एन इम्पोर्टेंट रोल सर क्योंकि इन द प्रेजेंट सिस्टम आल्सो नॉट एनी पी इन द प्रेजेंट सिस्टम इफ यू मोटिवेट सच स्टूडेंट्स देन दे कैन क्रिएट मिरेकल सर वन ऑफ द माई स्टूडेंट हु फ्रॉम द विलेज बैकग्राउंड फादर की दुकान थी कोई बनी है कि सर और उनने बहुत मना किया पढ़ने नहीं जाएगा इतनी फीस खर्च करेगा दुकान पर बैठ जा 
वो लड़ झगड़ के लोन लेके और यहाँ पढ़ने आ गया फर्स्ट ईयर में उसके मार्क्स आए नहीं तो मेरे पास आया वो चल के कि सर मैं क्या करूँ वापस मैं जा नहीं सकता क्योंकि मैं लोन लेके आया हूँ और मेरी इज्जत का सवाल है और मुझे समझ में नहीं आता मैं तो इंजीनियर मेरे को मालूम नहीं था एजुकेशन पढ़ के कि इस तरह इंजीनियर बनते हैं क्या उसके दिमाग में कुछ और चल रहा था सर यू विल नॉट बिलीव यू मेडिकल मिडिल मतलब उस लेवल का स्टूडेंट था एंड नाउ ही इज हैविंग टू थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड करोड़ टर्न ओवर डूइंग विद द इंटीरियर डिजाइन तो एक दिन मैं चला गया उसके पास मिलने तो बहुत रेस्पेक्ट किया उसने और बोलता सर मैं अपने आपके इंस्टीट्यूट के लिए कुछ करना चाहता हूँ मैंने कहा हमारे यहाँ सेमिनार हॉल नहीं है डेवलप कर दे ही इन्वेस्टेड ट्वेंटी लैक्स रुपीज सर केवल एक मीटिंग में और अभी उसके नाम से हमने एक सेमिनार हॉल रखा हुआ बिल्कुल स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट तो कहने का मतलब ये है कि टीचर्स कैन प्ले वाइटल रोल इन एनकरेजिंग सच स्टूडेंट्स जिनके अंदर तो है लेकिन तो एन भी उसी डायरेक्शन में प्रयास है हर बच्चे को प्रारंभिक शिक्षा उसकी मातृभाषा में देने का प्रयत्न करें क्योंकि उसकी अंडरस्टैंडिंग अपनी मदर टंग में ज्यादा होती है और उसके अधिकारों के साथ उसके कर्तव्यों से उसको अवगत कराएं खुद से हटकर परिवार समाज व देश के लिए कुछ करने का भाव उसके अंदर जागृत करें ये कई विषय हैं जिन जिनसे हमारी प्रेजेंट एजुकेशन सिस्टम दूर था और इसी की परिणीति है कि सर एक डेटा में देख रहा था कि पिचहत्तर साल के अपने इंडिपेंडेंस में अपनी जो ग्लोबल रैंकिंग है चाहे वो ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट में हो ग्लोबल इनोवेशन में हो ग्रोस नेशनल हैप्पीनेस इंडेक्स की बात करें ग्लोबल पीस की बात करें ग्लोबल हेल्थ सोशल प्रोग्रेस और पेटेंट रजिस्टर की बात करें अपना देश काफी पिछड़ा हुआ है सो दैट पुट ए बिग क्वेश्चन मार्क ऑन आवर एजुकेशनल और सोशल और पोलिटिकल फेब्रिक कि कहीं ना कहीं कुछ गड़बड़ है सर एंड दैट्स व्हाई टू रिवाइव ऑल दीज थिंग इट्स अ गुड मूव टू गो फॉर एन ई पी विच एज ट्राइड टू कवर ऑल दीज एस्पेक्ट ऑल दीज शोर्ट कमिंग सो दैट वी कैन री इनोवेट आवर एजुकेशन उनतीस जुलाई 2020 को सर इसको जारी किया गया था और दैट अ वंडरफुल चेंजेस इन सम डॉक्यूमेंट विच एज कम आफ्टर थर्टी फोर ईयर्स और सो इसके पहले नाइनटीन एटी सिक्स में एक बहुत लार्ज स्केल पे अपनी एजुकेशन पॉलिसी में परिवर्तन किया था और उसके बाद ये पहला और जिसमें ढाई लाख लोगों के सजेशन इन्वॉल्व किए गए इट्स नॉट ए डॉक्यूमेंट प्रिपेयर्ड इन द ए सी चैम्बर्स बाई द टू और थ्री पर्सन पार्टिसिपेटेड सो सो अब इस अब इसमें स्कूल एजुकेशन की बात करें तो इस सिस्टम जो हमारा टेन प्लस टू का बोर्ड स्ट्रक्चर था उसको फाइव प्लस थ्री प्लस थ्री प्लस फोर कर दिया क्योंकि ये आवश्यकता महसूस हुई कि बच्चे की जो ग्रोथ है चाहे मेंटल ग्रोथ है चाहे फिजिकल ग्रोथ है उसी के साथ उसकी लर्निंग कैपेसिटी डेवलप होती है और उसी हिसाब से उसको एजुकेशन दी जानी चाहिए सो फाइव प्लस थ्री प्लस थ्री प्लस फोर का जो स्ट्रक्चर है सर इसमें बच्चे की आयु निर्धारित की है तीन साल से सात साल के लिए फाउंडेशन स्टेज में रहेगा जिसमें क्लास वन या टू में जाएगा उसके बाद प्रिपरेटरी स्टेज डिफाइन की है एज होगी आठ से दस साल और क्लास थर्ड से फिफ्थ तक वो उसमें पढ़ेगा इसके बाद मिडिल स्टेज को डिफाइन किया है ग्यारह साल से तेरह साल जिसमें क्लास सिक्स से एट तक वो अध्ययन करेगा और उसके बाद सेकेंडरी स्टेज होगी फोर्टीन से सेवनटीन इयर्स जो अभी भी है एज के साथ कहीं कंप्रोमाइज नहीं किया ट्वेल्थ क्लास अब भी सेवनटीन ईयर में करता था अब भी करेगा पर उसका थोड़ा सा स्ट्रक्चरिंग और एजुकेशन किस लेवल की किस लेवल पर प्रोवाइड की जाए किन चीज़ों को इन्वॉल्व किया जाए हेल्थ एजुकेशन है अपनी रिच जो कल्चर हेरिटेज और अपनी वैल्यूएबल संस्कृति है उसको किस तरह उससे अटैच किया जाए ताकि कनेक्टिविटी जनरेशन टू जनरेशन मेंटेन रहे उसकी और सिक्स स्कूली शिक्षा के दौरान समस्त विषयों को जैसे साइंस मैथ्स आर्ट्स लैंग्वेज सभी विषयों स्पोर्ट्स इन सब विषयों को जो है समान रूप से बेटेज दिया गया है ऐसा नहीं कि मतलब एट्थ नाइन्थ में जो प्रेजेंट सिस्टम में जाकर डिसाइड होता है कि तू कॉमर्स पढ़ेगा तो साइंस पढ़ेगा तो राइट फ्रॉम द स्कूल एजुकेशन दे वो ट्राइड टू इम्पार्ट द नॉलेज ऑफ ऑल दीज सब्जेक्ट्स प्राइमरीली सो दैट स्टूडेंट कैन सेल्फ अंडरस्टैंड वाट इज इज इंटरेस्ट क्योंकि अभी तो जब उसको जब पहली दूसरी पांचवी क्लास में होता है उसे कह दिया जाता है इंजीनियर बन साइंस मैथ्स का उसको आइडिया नहीं क्या है सो इन दैट वे ही विल ही विल हिमसेल्फ फाइंड आउट हिज ओन इंटरेस्ट एंड दैट वे ही विल परफॉर्म बेटर देन द प्रेजेंट व्हाट ही इज परफॉर्मिंग इन द प्रेजेंट एजुकेशन सिस्टम सेकेंड चीज जो थ्रस्ट दिया गया है सर सिक्स स्टैंडर्ड ऑनवर्ड्स है छात्रों को आत्मनिर्भर बनाने के लिए 
वोकेशनल कोर्सेज का प्रावधान भी सिक्स स्टैंडर्ड से उसमें इन्वॉल्व कर दिया गया है ताकि वो यदि आगे पढ़ने में इच्छुक नहीं है या उसकी कैपेसिटी uh, नहीं है फैमिली बैकग्राउंड ऐसा नहीं है सो ही कैन स्टार्ट हिज ओन बिजनेस थ्रू दिस वोकेशनल कोर्सेज सो विद द न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी टू बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड देर विल बी डबल ब्लो टू द स्कूल सिस्टम दो ट्रांजिशन फेज आ गए एक तो सर बच्चे दो साल के कोविड पीरियड के बाद स्कूल में आ रहे हैं और एक नई एजुकेशन पॉलिसी भी हम उसमें इम्प्लीमेंट करने जा रहे हैं सो दैट इज द डबल चैलेंज फॉर द टीचर्स फॉर द कॉलेज एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन टू कूप अप टू फेस दीज चैलेंजेस साइमल्टेनियसली सो दैट वी कैन मेक आवर चिल्ड्रन मोर ब्राइट एंड सक्सेसफुल दैट्स वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू से अबाउट दिस एन ई पी ज्यादा डिटेल में नहीं बताया सर thank you thank you for uh, putting some light on the uh, nep to school education system now quick questions uh, one question is there for uh, dr ramnan how can we redefine and cross check our ideas for process or business improvement uh can can you repeat that question how can you redefine okay. how can we redefine and cross check our ideas for any process or a business for business improvement yeah so i think it's a very very good question because uh, there are two types of problems that one uh, solves one is a social related problem and second is a commercial or a business related problem and when you are having an idea to solve a business problem and that problem could be uh, solved either because an of an improvement in process Uh, or it could be because of an introduction of a solution a technology driven solution or some other solution for uh, solving that business problem uh, take for example if you look at supply chain management right supply chain management may there is a number of uh, intermediate parties uh, across which uh, that supply flows and finally it gets transformed for, for example if you are a if you are a company which is manufacturing some particular product then the raw material has to come Uh, from various uh, uh, locations, uh, and so there is a whole supply chain. And very often in a supply chain, it is a process improvement rather than any technology uh, solution that will help. But now, because of sensor technologies, and you want to track, and you want to be able to find optimal routes uh, for the supply chain to come to you faster, or your product to be delivered faster, you can leverage technology also to be able to uh, create a solution. so you have a process improvement which is possible for optimal uh, scheduling storage onward transportation uh, management of that entire supply chain and then you have a technology driven solution which can be uh, a, a software like covid may how we were tracking you know the distribution of vaccines uh, it was both using technology as well as uh, being able to create processes uh, to administer it very effectively so any idea the important thing is when you come up with an idea first you this is why design thinking is very important people should apply design thinking in being able to come up with a solution and design thinking is what is that you create a a, a mental map of the solution uh, and how it is going to be applied and then you validate this through a prototype you create a prototype of a solution and us prototype ko validate karna hai with potential customers beta customers get the feedback go back into reiterating improvements to your solution until it meets uh, uh, you know a particular business need uh, you know many very often what people do is they come up with an innovation but that innovation already exists you are the fact is you are not aware of it so but when you go to the market and you run it with a few customers they say oh we are already having a good solution for this right so you have to do this validation this is called the systems engineering approach of validating a business idea and then improving uh, improvising upon it through a feedback loop and then finally when the prototype becomes a viable prototype what they call as a minimum viable prototype wo oh, minimum viable prototype ko ke stage mein then you launch it into the market and that's how the business idea Uh, the idea gets converted into an innovation and the innovation could be a process innovation it could be a service innovation or it could be a product innovation right. all three innovations are possible uh, take for example this whole uh, swiggy swiggy was a great example of service, service innovation where they started adding more and more 
you you could deliver pizza or you could deliver a mail or you could deliver point A to point B. Today in Bombay, I was amazed. Uh, you know, um, uh, my my daughter went somewhere and then suddenly, you know, uh, she it was lunch time and then she was not um, keeping too well. So we, uh, from one point of Bombay to another, we just called Swiggy and they go in and delivered the food and they delivered the medicines uh, to her. And, and that sort of, you know, point to point service, they have improvised in their service. And this is a service innovation, right? So today you have service innovation, you have product innovation and process innovation, and all of these are possible, but the validation is very important, you know, and design thinking is very important. If you don't integrate design thinking into your innovation, whether it be in process, product, or service, then uh, it will not uh, have the robustness that is needed for it to succeed. Thank you, Dr. Ramnan, for addressing this particular question in a wonderful and uh, self-explanatory manner. Uh, now, before I uh, raise a question uh, for uh, uh, Professor Suneja, uh, people, those who are uh, attending the session, they can download their digital certificates. The uh, link is given in the chat box. And uh, this but the, today's video will be made available shortly on the YouTube channel of Deepya. Those who uh, wish to recommend the video for the, their friends and colleagues, the link is given in the chat box. Now moving towards uh, Professor Suneja. Yes, sir. Is offline education still be a better option for the students of India? I repeat no. the question. Yes. Is offline education is still a better option for the students of India? Uh, not exactly, uh, because uh, that has nicely explained by uh, Ramnan sir also, that with the innovations, with the development of technology during this COVID period and the people, how the people get acquainted with this technology of ICT. So we cannot uh, keep or make it sidelined basically, because uh, that, that has got its tremendous advantages. But of course, as Ram Ramnan has already said, that uh, how to communicate, how to interact with the society, with the people, you cannot uh, leave the classes. You cannot forget about the offline education. So what in the present scenario, what is needed, basically the judicious combination of both these two, because there is a lot of knowledge, a lot of uh, uh, experiment ko explain kya gaya hai. So uh, we can go for the judicious combination of those two, and we cannot we cannot completely sideline any of these two. That's the better way. To go Thank you, uh, uh, Professor Suneja. Now I would be able to uh, take two more questions, one for each. Uh, this one is for Dr. Ramnan. How can we attract more students towards innovation at an early age? Yeah, I think I think the the best way of uh, uh, attracting more students towards innovation is provide them the tools, provide them the technologies, provide them the environment for stimulating innovation. You see, uh, at the end of the day, that's why, for example, uh, uh, games and toys uh, are now becoming increasingly popular in how you can use. Wordle has become so popular now in uh, on the net. Many of you may be using Wordle. Wordle is just how do you create new words, you know, out of uh, uh, a jumble of uh, alphabets. And, and have you guessed the right word within uh, three or four tries? Now you're using technology to be able to quickly learn vocabulary. Functional literacy is possible. And, uh, but you have to create an environment of fun. You have to create an environment where people enjoy the process of learning. And if you create it as a dull, staid process, uh, if you make it so uh, mechanical, or if you make it so difficult that you know you could recognize only the top 10 and then the rest of the people feel you know very bad about the whole thing, you are not creating that environment of fun. So I think a classroom is a room where fun and learning should go together. If you create fun and learning, you will stimulate innovation. And because in the process of, when I talk of fun, it is not just jumping around and, and running around. Give them the tools, give them the technologies, give them the environment and don't put the pressure on them that I'm going to judge you by the marks, you yeah. know, create something and I'm going to appreciate, oh, wow, 
this is an idea i never thought about this and and so how can you expand on this idea and then you are stimulating this whole innovation and creativity because creativity is all about doing something new or improvising on something that already exists and how do you train the child to see what they can do to improve things in this world and how they can create new solutions for the world and then you have unleashed that innovation uh, you know and throw challenges at them uh, it is very interesting don't throw solutions uh, you know like somebody said i should teach the child to uh, fish and not provide the fish to the child right uh, if you teach the child to fish then the, the child is able to learn how to fish and and be able to learn on its own and survive on its own uh, whereas if you every day bring a platter of fish to the child and say you know here is your food today they say okay next day mera platter kahan nahi hai and i don't know how to fish so you know i don't know how to survive in this world right so that's a very important thing teaching them to fish teaching them to learn teaching them to apply their mind to solve problems uh, can stimulate their creativity and once they do that it's a sort of irreversible journey uh, you have, if you launch an innovation journey and you are able to innovate something and create something that's an irreversible journey you will not go back to wanting to just learn blindly so when you find out joy in each and every process of learning or day to day living the learning becomes easy you really exactly. enjoy you know never get bored and then ultimately innovation happens yes. so ultimately the there is nothing like purpose of life you yeah. add purpose to your life exactly so by through keen observations and the learning process so uh, coming to the concluding question professor suneja sir uh, this is about the importance of regional language in education Uh, rightly sir uh, that has been given a, a great thought to this uh, that uh, we have to see that what is happening in english medium school whatever uh, the instruction are provided first he converts in his, in his own mother tongue and then try to understand because you are teaching the children uh, in other language other than the mother tongue language so he can better grasp the things so he will get jo sir ne bataya uske paas uh, critical thinking ka time hoga uske paas enjoy karne ka time hoga yadi uske upar language ka burden ek aur additional na dala jaye to so it's a good move and recently iict taken a good step ki first year aur second year ke book i was member of that committee also they have converted into regional language in seven or eight languages also so that's a good move and the education should be in that kyunki english seekhna usko english mein bolna that can be learned anywhere the main thing is the understanding and understanding can be uh, developed through the mother tongue only so that's why importance of regional lang language cannot be ignored sir so it's a good move from my point of view sir if you want to add something uh, yes I, I, think I, I think yeah i i just want to give an example you know we sir. had we created a, a collaboration between russian students and uh, indian students yeah. uh, in uh, 2018 where we created a collaboration between atal innovation mission and the sirius center yeah. and a group of 10 students from russia visited india and then we thought you know we came, we came to know that they are coming and within a very short period of time uh the idea was they wanted to understand uh, what is happening in schools and these are very talented students from russia so we put together a program where we put 10 students from india and 10 students from russia together and okay. we said these 20 students we broke them into four four groups of four four so five teams five. we created where right. two in, uh, indian students and two russian students were there now the russian students didn't speak in english they were not uh, yeah. very yeah. conversant in english indian students you know, also were from variety of places so somewhere from you know mm. bilaspur and somewhere from uh, chatisgarh and some from uh, delhi and so on so they all spoke multiple languages so now we came to a situation where the language was each could not speak that particular language but technology became the great leveler and it is amazing how children pick up you know how to be a problem solver by communication uh not just through language uh but through other mechanisms of illustration demonstration and so on and so forth and of course in the process they picked up the language so oh. i think the point that i want to make here is that language 
is not the precursor for creativity and innovation. Innovation and creativity automatically happens when you provide the students the tools and a collaborative environment. And that collaboration environment by seeing and doing. For example, and do. if, you know, when they were finding that they were running an innovation problem, one of the Russian students will, will do something and they are seeing it. And when they see it, they learn it. And when they learn it, then another Indian student applies some new, you know, he changes some software or something like that. And this Russian student seeing. So this experiential learning is so very important and it can overcome all boundaries. All language boundaries can be overcome. But at the same time, I think it's so very important that regional language should be given the importance. And I think we have introduced in uh, Atal Innovation Mission, uh, you know, in 14 different languages, how do you um, uh, have classes being conducted and material content has been created in different languages now so yes. that the students are not suffering for due to lack of knowledge of English in their local tongue, whether it is in Tamil or whether it is in Kannada or whether it is in Bengali or whether it is in uh, Marathi. Now you have content and material available and it is now possible because Google Translate is there, you know, Google Translate has translated into about 26 different languages or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are now having the tools for automatic conversion. The idea is uh, children, for example, you know, are very familiar with that language, mother tongue. Uh, they learn faster and, and use that to drive knowledge and then automatically to pick up other languages also. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So before I conclude the session, uh, I extend uh, thanks to the uh, attendees, those who are joining this, those, have joined, uh, those who have joined this session. Uh, through different platforms. They can download their digital certificates. The link is given in the chat box. And today's session will be made available on the YouTube channel of uh, Deepya. And uh, I extend my great thanks uh, to Dr. Ramanan, sir, as he's in uh, USA right now. And the time we started uh, at 5 o'clock, it was 4.30 a.m. Uh, there. <laughs> so I know it was, uh, you know, uh, it, can, it, it must have been quite inconvenient for you to get up so early and be with us. But uh, it's called in, 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 in uh, our uh, uh, Hindu philosophy, it is called Brahma Muhurt. So it is good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your great teachings and great examples, uh, especially. Yeah. Our first hand examples, Pandar. and uh, I re-congratulate you for whatever uh, you have contributed uh, at Atal Innovation Mission, and uh, it's a legacy, and people are carrying forward, and I expect that others would take example uh, of your leadership, and uh, you would be able to contribute more for the society uh, and nation uh, at large. And uh, once again, thank you, uh, Professor Suneja for your uh, uh, teachings in a simplified manner, and especially the uh, poem. I, I presume it's a uh, self-written poem because yeah. I know that you write well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have a poetic instinct as well as uh, along with your civil engineering uh, skills. So thank you once again. To uh, I, I would like to thank uh, Puneet Ji uh, one, uh, for one for the giving me the opportunity to share whatever I have. And the second thing, to enlighten me in the presence of Dr. Ramnan, sir. Thank you very much, sir. No, uh, it's, been, uh, yeah. it's, it's been a great opportunity. It's been as enlightening, uh, Bharatji, uh, to <laughs> listen to you. I was really uh, very much impressed with not only, you know, you, you brought out very beautifully the challenges and the practical issues that are there. And as uh, Puniji said, you know, in a very simplified manner so that all of us understand. And your quotations were marvelous, you know, absolutely yes, to the point. And sir, so I don't know, but what I have tried because then the during RTU, I was the NEP coordinator, sir, uh, university coordinator. And I okay. tried to okay. promote this NEP issue. And we have made the changes in curriculum at par with the NEP within the present constraint. And after retirement in June, I got retired. So what mm. I have done to promote the NEP among the pro professionals, sir, the all professional professional bodies, Jitni Institute of Engineers, a National Building Con Congress, a, thousands of engineers are attached with those. And there I have uh, put this uh, issue forward that what mm. is the role of professional in new education policy? What Come is the point. role of professional ethics? Mm. in the new education policy or in the sustainable development. So that is areas I am touching in my own language in simplified way, I try to convince Excellent. them. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I, I want to also 
compliment puneet ji for a wonderful moderation Under, as uh, always 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 sir thank always. you thank you sir <laughs> it is always reciprocal uh, great saint tabir has hmm. said tere man se puchiye mere man ki baat when we are synergized <laughs> we are on the same platform thoughts come automatically and it's always joy interacting with you such kind of great people so this is for all for today be a learner learner of a school that is called life thank you all thank you once again we'll see you next month with a new topic with new guest with some new interesting conversation thank you thank you